Bill Burden was a good shepherd of this church as moderator and trustee, and also of this town as the emergency management director. And when COVID arrived, uh, his shepherding rose to heroic uh, stature. Um, he, he died, his health was already uh, declining, and yet he, he rose and just did a heroic work. Um, he died at the end of July uh, last year, but what he did in the early months of the pandemic set the course for Stratford's carefulness and Stratford's care for one another that got us through so well. Um, later in the service, we will have the opportunity to talk about heroes and heroic actions that we have seen. And there is much that we could say about Bill's steady, good shepherding. Um, we'll, we'll also uh, be asking ourselves the question, what heroic actions do we need now in this new time? Uh, what do we need in our families or as a church or as a nation or a world? Heroes are everyday people who overcome whatever holds them back from using their gifts to serve others in some way, large or small. Jesus says to everyone, follow me. And that is a call to heroic action, always. Um, William Blake attached the words of Moses to his poem, Jerusalem, that uh, the choir will sing as the anthem today. Uh, Moses said, would that all God's people were prophets and that God would put the divine spirit on them. So what heroic action is God calling you to? What, what, what situation in your life or in the world calls to you or calls to this church? Let us worship together, opening to the voice of the divine spirit within and around us. In a few minutes, uh, the choir is going to sing a poem by William Blake. I don't know if you heard the poem uh, practicing last week, but um, maybe you'll recognize it when you hear it. Uh, it relates to good shepherding and uh, to heroes that we're talking about today. Um, and really, this is this song, this poem is at the core of what the church and what Jesus are all about. So I don't know if you like poetry or not, but I want to go through and just kind of explain. A little bit about the poem, so when you hear him sing it, you'll, you'll, you'll get more about it. Um, the poem begins uh, with a little bit of a mystery because you don't know what it's really talking about. It begins, and did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? So Blake is imagining that Jesus visited England back when Jesus was alive. So imagine that Jesus once sat right where you're sitting. I mean, imagine if Jesus had sat right there. Imagine if Jesus, imagine Jesus riding his bike around the Stratford Common or hiking up to Wickham Hill like the Moses pasture. I mean, imagine. So that's what Blake is, is picturing. He's picturing Jesus being right where he was. And, um, and, and to think that thought kind of wakes us up to the truth that we live in a sacred place. We live in a place where the best that people could possibly be could live, where, where we could make that happen. So it, it gives us hope, and it gives, Blake, it gives William Blake hope. And the poem goes on. And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? So we come to a problem in this stanza. Um, the problem is humans have not lived up to Jesus. Uh, the, the smoke of our pollution clouds the, the hills. Um, the, the mills of big corporations are making the rich richer and the poor poorer. So in this poem, uh, Jerusalem means the ideal society, uh, the realm of God on earth, uh, 
the, 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 the place that Jesus was trying to make for you in the, the way, um, a place of, of the golden rule, uh, fairness for everybody, democracy, um, democratic and free. So the poet gets all fired up. He gets all fired up. He wants to establish this ideal, loving society on earth. So he says, bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear. Oh, clouds, unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. So this is the song of a good shepherd. It's a, a hero rising to do what is right. And Blake says, notice that Blake says, I will not cease from mental fight. So I wonder if you can guess what that makes me think of. You're a little rusty, I know. Anybody? Prayer! Prayer! <laughs> Prayer! So, um, so Mahatma Gandhi you know, the hero of, of India, the liberated India, said that his greatest weapon was silent prayer. Um, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. So this hymn, what it comes down to, believe it or not, is prayer. It calls us to work without ceasing, to change the world, and to let prayer guide and inspire all our actions. Moses said in the wilderness, on the way to the promised land, would that all God's people were prophets, and that God would put the divine spirit on them. The divine spirit came upon William Blake in a wilderness of social injustice and environmental destruction. And he wrote, I will not cease from mental fight till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. This is the core of Judeo-Christian religion. It's the core, really, <clears throat> of all spirituality and the core of evolutionary science, too. The spirit of the universe calls all of us, all its creations, to build the realm of God around us, which meaning to build the ideal conditions for life to survive, thrive, and evolve. And this is what good shepherding means. And we are all called to do it in our own way and in our own place. The reason why good shepherds are called to heroic action is that there are forces that threaten those ideal conditions of life. The word uh, hero has a Greek root which means protecting and saving. Professor Joseph Campbell identified a journey that, that mythological heroes typically follow. They begin living ordinary lives, and then they receive a call to do something extraordinary. They overcome their inner or outer obstacles uh, that could hold them back. So they, they, choose their, they choose to go, and they overcome what's blocking them. Um, and then they depart on a, on a wilderness path of tasks and trials. In the end, they achieve a goal that results both in new self-knowledge and in gifts to share with others when they return. Joseph Campbell cited Jesus as a classic hero. Uh, today's passage begins with Jesus inviting the disciples to take a break. This is a form of heroism that we need to understand today. It is heroic to resist the pressure to do too much and to burn out. It is heroic in our society to keep the Sabbath, to have a, a day of rest, to spend time uh, nurturing our spiritual life at home, and at church. This is countercultural and it's heroic. But as often happens to good shepherds, um, people in need came to Jesus, and he had to choose whether to rest or serve. Mark says he had compassion for them. 
because they were like sheep without a shepherd. It's not so much what the hero does as who the hero is that ends up making a difference in others' lives. Compassionate actions arise from a compassionate heart. Heroic actions are byproducts of a way of being that allows the divine spirit to match our gifts with the world's need. The prophet Jeremiah talked about the hero whom God would send uh, as a messianic good shepherd of Israel. And Jeremiah said, this is the name by which he will be called. God is my righteousness. Heroes may be of any religion or of no religion, but they have a higher power that is the source of their righteousness. Jesus, if you think about it, was vulnerable. He was really weak compared to the powerful forces that he opposed. But the Spirit's power flowed through him. So this, this transcendence is one of the most beautiful qualities of true heroes and heroic actions. Alice, Alice was in her mid-80s and starting to get confused in the early stages of Alzheimer's. She had been an organist and a choir director as a young woman, but she had not done anything with music for 40 years. She had just moved back to her old hometown and joined a church choir when the organist and choir director got very sick two days before Christmas Eve. Alice was scared and she was unsure, unsure of herself, but she volunteered to step in, playing all of the music for that packed service of over 300 people and directing a choir of 30. Imagine how vulnerable she felt and how weak compared to what was required of her. And everyone knew, everyone knew that she was 40 years rusty. Um, everyone knew the heroic risk she was taking. And it made that Christmas Eve service miraculous. And Alice continued that heroism for months as the interim organist and choir director. Years later, when she was in her 90s, Alice was by then deep in dementia, but she still sat with the choir. Uh, and one Sunday, the organist left the sanctuary during the sermon and had not returned when it was time for the hymn. And the congregation just kind of sat there in awkward silence and then suddenly, before anyone could stop her, Alice rose from her seat and walked to the piano. And everyone held their breath because Alice no longer knew even who she was or where she was. The hymn was, Be Still My Soul. And she played it perfectly. But the singing was not so good <laughs> because there was not a dry eye in that sanctuary. We tell the stories of good shepherds and heroes because they move us deeply. The divine spirit in them calls to the divine spirit in us to risk our own vulnerability and open ourselves to the higher power that can work miracles through us. Heroism is about a way of being. So heroism is grounded in daily practice. We need to resolve with William Blake, I will not cease from mental fight. Alice had meditated twice a day for decades. Contemplative listening prayer is an essential uh, practice. Um, uh, and, um, and we see this today uh, in the, the um, resurging Christian contemplative movement. It is tied to a courageous action. Um, for social justice. Contemplative listening prayer is, um, uh, can be, it can be two 20-minute formal meditations a day, or a walk in the woods, or spiritual conversation, listening to sacred music, um, whatever opens us to the, the Spirit's still small voice. 
Also, another practice is engaging with big questions, as our future direction statement uh, commits us to do. Uh, learning, evolving to a new level of consciousness, these, these are important practices too. The question facing us as individuals uh, every day, and the question facing this church this fall, when it will seek a vision for its future, is what is the Spirit calling us to be and to do? Right now, in the middle of summer, after a pandemic and a transition back to active life, um, the hero's journey may be leading us up a mountainside to rest and pray, heroically resisting the temptation to keep just overdoing and burning out. But we can be sure that sooner or later, a new need will present itself and call us into action. Heroes are heroes because they are listening for that call, even when they are on their way to a deserted place to rest. And they are ready to be moved by the Spirit to say yes. So let us pray in silence, uh, listening to the Spirit calling us, whether to heroic, to heroic rest or to heroic action. Let us pray. Amen. Oh,